Okay, I've had seven o'clock, so I will call the meeting. Go for it, order. Mark. Um, and uh, according to Dawn, we have uh, no one from the public other than Monty, so there will be no public comments tonight. Monty, can I just have your last name? Uh, Whaley, W-H-A-L-E-Y. Thank you. Okay, can uh, I have a motion to approve the minutes from our January 25th meeting, please? Mark? Kathy, okay. Um, I, well, I, there was a couple of things that were typos that need to probably be corrected. All right, you wanna put those into the record? Okay, yes. Um, it's in the city council liaison report, um, item five. It reads, connecting the two feasibility students in the studies. post, it should be studies. And um, in the, under old business, part B, discussion of the Mosher and Emson funds in point I or point one, there's a phrase in parentheses. It says, although not all if available, I think that should be is. Is, is correct. Yeah. And then uh, in item four, where we uh, did the motion to put together a subcommittee, do we need to list the names of the people on the committee? There's no names in there. And I was just wondering. I don't think there actually is a subcommittee yet. <laughs> okay. Well, it was a subcommittee, it was a subcommittee of one. <laughs> 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 and that member has not been doing a good job. <laughs> well, we can talk through that when that agenda item. Uh, that would be my only question: if we need to list the name, or if if we don't need to, then it's there's it, then it's fine. Uh, I'd, I'd leave it nameless at this point. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Those were the only corrections I had. Does anybody else have any other corrections? Do we have a motion to approve as amended? I move that we approve the minutes as amended. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Approved. Okay. Um, Nancy, uh, you have the floor okay. reports uh, from the director's office. All right. Well, um, director's actually back in her office, so I'm not sitting in the middle of the um, of the upstairs behind a pillar anymore. So we are making some progress. Um, our construction slash carpet project continues. It's still pretty chaotic in the library. Um, I think I've moved more furniture in the last month than I've moved in my entire life. So we are moving things back and forth to accommodate both the floor repairs of all the cracks and then put you know, taking, basically it's the process of going into an area, removing all the furniture, removing all the carpet, seeing what damage there may or may not be underneath the carpet doing all the repairs and then moving everything back the other direction. So in the meantime, depending on what area we're working on, we are relocating staff to different parts of the library, upstairs, um, other areas, et cetera. And we're almost running out of places to put things because we keep trying to put things out of the way, but good progress. The staff areas downstairs will be pretty much repaired and completed by the end of this week. So. We are moving some stuff back in. Um, we continue to find some cracks in the floor. This was all part of you know, a, a project that was forecast you know, several years ago. And we did know that we would find, or there was a distinct possibility that we would find cracks in the library building because of the cracks that were found in the Civic Center and some other uh, buildings built similar vintage. And we, have five different foundations, four or five different foundations in our building. And one of them is part of the old library structure from the seventies. So 
we seem to be getting most of the problems where one foundation abuts another. So that and the Colorado weather, um, you know, the rapid changes in temperature, this happens in the Chicago area too. You have a lot of rapid expansion and contractions in the building. So um, we did end up with far more cracks in the newer part of the building and also more severe cracks than earlier expected, but they're all being addressed. We have, uh, most days we have our whole library curbside crew, plus the rest of us that are already in the building, plus a crew of movers, plus a crew of carpet folks, plus a um, construction crew, sometimes two. So it is pretty um, noisy and crowded in the building, but staff's doing an amazing job of working around it. We have everything from the back and the front. We today had to turn the circulation desk folks and around and stick them on the other side of the desk so we could handle the area behind the desk. And we just kind of move things around and, and go about our business. So can't tell you exactly how long this is going to take. Um, you know, it, it depends on what we, and what, not we, but the construction folks who know what they're doing find as they go along. We hope to be reopened by summertime. So um, construction still continues. So in the meantime, we are still doing um, approximately one curbside delivery per minute of all the times we were open. So we are um, hard at work with books and materials, delivering tax forms via curbside, um, printouts. Our seed library has gone virtual this year. So we are delivering packets of seeds that you can order what ones you want online and pick them up. There's a lot of folks that are hopeful for spring because a lot of seeds are just flying off the, of our shelf. Right now, we still have the pick a topic bags where people can call in and or sign up online to request a bag full of materials on a specific topic. We are still doing the take home craft kits for kids and teens every week. Um, just wound up submissions for our seven annual, seventh annual Peeps Diorama Contest. So those are always fun to see. We have to do it online this time. We don't have all the sugar in the lobby, but that's going well. Um, we have an Authors We Love evening. That's the author event that we normally have at the museum. In this case, it will be virtual, but it's with Jamie Ford on the 31st. Jamie Ford is the author of the best-selling um, Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet and a couple other novels. He's uh, New York Times best-selling author. Um, let's see, I think we're on our fourth book chatter podcast. So our adult services staff have been busy doing podcasts. Uh, we're still doing the Ablemos Let's Talk Spanish conversation program a couple times a week, um, three or four story times during the week, teen writers group, spring break book clubs. So there's a lot going on. It's just um, not going on in the library yet. So we are keeping busy. Um, our hot spots are still going out like crazy. Uh, the other day, it was the fewest I'd seen on the shelf. I think we had four out of our 89 Wi-Fi hotspots available. So they are going out, especially around the snowstorm time. We look like we had a rush of folks checking them out in case their, their um, internet service happened to go out. So those are doing really well. Our text to librarian new program is going well too. We're receiving lots of text requests from patrons and lots of text questions. And let's see, we should have all those Chromebooks that we got from the CARES Act funding available pretty soon for checkout as well. So a um, little chaotic in the library, stepping around construction and, and movers materials, but we're all doing well. So um, any questions for uh, Nancy on her uh, report? I had a couple, Nancy. Okay. Um, with respect to the repairs and that, when you get done with the repairs, will you be um, structurally solid, sound? We are, our, you know, our building is not unsound now. It has areas that need repair so that the, the building will last for a long time. So the goal here is to do the type of repairs that will make the building sound for another 50 years. So they're doing a, a, a really thorough job of making sure that everything is going to last a lot longer. And um, I've learned lots about different types of repairs <laughs> throughout this process. So yes, the building will be in good shape. And, and are the repairs 
are the repairs coming from your budget, the monies for the repairs? No, the repairs are coming from two bond measures, one in 2015 and one in 2018. There was money set aside for library infrastructure repairs. So, so that was accelerated, so to speak? Not really. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it, you know, they knew from, from my knowledge anyway, you know, it was get the Civic Center done first. And that seemed to be the area which was the, probably in the most dire need of, of repairs. And then move on to the library. And then my understanding is that after the library, there, there will be some similar inspections and repairs done at the Safety and Justice Center. And I think the Rec Center as well. So it's, it's just, um, you know, this is not unusual in cities to really um, put a concerted effort toward looking, looking after the infrastructure of the buildings. So that's what this is. Okay, well, I remember the bond issue. I, for some reason, I thought that the library, on there were a number of beneficiaries of that bond initiative. There were. And the library was, uh, at that time, did not grade out as the <clears throat> one of the earlier um, beneficiaries. <laughs> it's great that I haven't, you got it. So. I haven't looked too much at the 2015, but definitely, I have definitely seen that you know there was money dedicated to library infrastructure repairs in the 2018. I agree. I agree. Okay. Uh, anything else, Nancy? No, we're like I said, we're just kind of um, swamped with business, which is good. Um, our patrons are awesome. We did receive a, quite a bit of correspondence from our patrons on the one year anniversary of our closing. One of COVID's arrival, we've had Lots of really nice um, thank you notes and a little bit of chocolate coming in from patrons who have appreciated our services over the year. So, so that's been really nice. We miss our patrons. I know they miss you too. Okay, uh, with that, uh, I'll move on to the uh, next bullet, the Friends of the Library Report. Uh, Kathy, do you have something for us there? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Since we did not meet last month, I'm reporting for both January and February. <clears throat> the Friends of the Board meet uh, via Zoom, and in January, they moved to subscribe to Wild Apricot for one year. This is a program that will help them manage their membership donors. Uh, I think you can create a website with it, and it also provides an online store. So they're giving it a try for one year. The bookshop sales for December were $73.80, and there were no sales in January. Online sales for December and January totaled $1,404.35. The gift shop sales for December were $498.56. Uh, obviously, some people did some Christmas shopping. There were no sales in January. Uh, they also started selling to... Uh, a company called Dream World Books, and the sales for December and January totaled $417.23. Uh, the Dream World Books is a, it's a new company they've contracted with who buys books that the friends consider not sellable. Uh, Treasure Lynn Newberry reported they raised about $5,000 on Colorado Gifts Day, which is the most they have ever raised. They also received some additional donations before the end of the year uh, for a total of $6,100.59. So they had a good end of the year donation. Uh, the Friends Board, um, it was brought to them a request about helping with the little free libraries and they are willing to assist us in keeping them stocked uh, with the books at whatever location is chosen by uh, by the library staff or by the library advisory board for, that will be serving underserved populations. All we need to do is once we've identified the locations is let the friends board know and they will recruit the volunteers necessary to keep them stocked. So they've will agreed. We have to, will, will we have to erect the little libraries for them or will they do that? We didn't discuss erecting a library. It sounded like it would be more of, um, using what we already have or uh, like a space. If we were to do it, say, for example, with Salud Clinic, it might be just a bookshelf that's already there in the waiting room. So something like that. 
Um, all the members of Friends are required to renew at the end of December. Uh, renewed membership is currently at 144 and the committee is gonna continue to follow up with the 357 remaining members that need to renew. Uh, the library had some funding requests at both meetings. In January, there was one request for $1,080 which was renewing the nine hotspots that are part of the library of things for a checkout. This was approved. In February, there were three requests. Donald Prowitz, uh, did mm -hmm. I say his name right? Okay. <laughs> Asked for funds to provide a G Suite account with the Chrome Enterprise solution for the 30 Chromebooks. Essentially, the library will partner with the friends to create a Google workspace a G Suite account for nonprofits using the Friends nonprofit ID, which will be at no cost. The cost that for the money that was requested is to pay for the one-time purchase of the Chrome Enterprise solution at $900. This will cover the all of the Chromebooks. The board approved this request. Penny Burris from Adult Services and the Longmont Museum are pursuing a grant to digitize some of the Longmont newspapers. The they grant did receive that, Kathy. What? They just found out they did receive that grant. Oh, good, good, good. <clears throat> the grant requires a 25% match from the institution. And the maximum amount of the grant is $3,000. So the board approved uh, the matching funding of up to $750. There was also a request for expanding the library of things, but the board, the Friends Board, deferred that to uh, the next meeting in March. The board selected a nominating committee. It's getting to that time of the year for them. It's Sharon McCaffrey and Conrad Newton, and they will identify a third member. They will begin uh, finding and interviewing board candidates for the two board positions that are open for next year. And the next meeting is this Wednesday on March 24th. Questions for Kathy? But can I circle back on the on the little libraries because I'm not sure mm -hmm. how we stand in this. So, so the libraries that we erected that were vandalized, what do we do with those? Do we um, move on? Do we try and re-erect them? Do we look for different locations? Um, Mark, one of them has been removed entirely from the park, where so it doesn't exist at all, and the other one was pretty much smashed beyond repair. Yeah, I understand. So, so yeah, do we, we did, are we writing them off then? I think in those locations at least, but I think that there are multiple spots where we could put something like we talked about earlier, uh, you know, inside of a location, whether it's Salud, the Hour Center, um, Housing Authority sites, etc where there are bookshelves within those centers that would be a little, still be a little free library, but not necessarily the cute one on the stick that sticks in the park. Okay, so how do, how do, how do those get identified? Do they, how do they come to us or do we do that? That's, we have to contact the organizations obviously, and um, you know, set up a schedule for, for taking materials to those locations and then I would assume that we would provide signage um, for those bookshelves or shelving units that say that they are a little free library and that they are um, provided by whoever they're provided by, friends of the library, library board, et cetera. Well, okay, but so, so do, do we do that as the board? Do they do that as their board? Or do, do you do that as the library? We don't that? tend to do it as a library, but that was a discussion with this board before of looking to see if the friends had had interest in taking over that task of supply of supplying those libraries, and they said that they did. No, well, yeah, I understand that, and I'm okay, and I think that's great that they'll do that. Mm -hmm. But then, if if we're not going back to to what, where we were, which is mm -hmm. understandable, mm -hmm. uh, from a process standpoint. This, this is just a, a question to the board. How do we want to work to create those new locations in the community? Does that make sense? 
What's the process that makes that happen? I, I, I love, I, I wish I could show your looks back to you, because. I think, I think that's, you know, that, that's something, it's just, just what Kathy said, that the friends discussed it, and they said, you know, we can suggest locations for them, or, you know, the library can certainly do the, do the footwork if we need to, to find those locations, and then they will, they will be in charge of gathering materials and going to stock them. Has, has anyone approached, uh, any of those organizations approached you or anyone at the library to say, I have taken I have taken some materials over myself to one of the housing authority sites before, but I, they didn't seem, they seemed interested in more of, at least at that point, in more of a one-time okay. donation of materials, not on a rotating basis. I believe, I'll have to check on this though, because I believe one of our staff members has talked to Salud so I will check with her and see what kind of conversations she's had. And then someone else suggested potentially the Hour Center and we have not talked to them yet. Okay, I, I thought there was a, a, an organization within the city government that was sensitive to those communities that could recommend locations. Am I wrong? Well, there was some. Of, I mean, that's community services of which we are a part, and you know, those are some of the the locations that were recommended. So, and there may be others as well. That, that I'm I'm okay with all that. I'm just I'm just more into the process here as to how it gets done and uh, how our board can facilitate that process to make sure that. The Friends Board has the information they need to get the books out into the community. Let me, why don't I pose the question on Wednesday, which is the next Friends meeting, and see whether they want to, to have this board do any of the, of the groundwork on this or whether they'd like to just take over and run with it. That's great. That would be great. I will do that. Then I, then I had a second question as I listened to you talk, Kathy. What's the fair financial wherewithal of the friends nowadays? Because with the virus, they must have taken a financial hit. Yeah, they, they, uh, their income, and when the budget was prepared for this fiscal year, because their fiscal year, uh, correct me, Katie, if I'm wrong, it's, isn't it May or April to May? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we, they've already gone through this year of the pandemic. And when Lynn did the budget for it, she was prepared for them not to have any book sales. So she pared the budget down, and, but she assured the organization that there, there's, they have money in a, you know, uh, CDs or special yeah. investment accounts that she says, we, there is plenty of money to, loan, to give to the library. We can, there is not an issue there. You know, we can't do it for many years, but um, so they're just looking for this initial time with the pandemic and not being able to do a book sale that, um, that they will still be able to fund the library. And then once things open back up and they can do book sales again, then they'll have the money coming back in. So That's great. That's so. great. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the friends? Councilman Waters? Mark? Yes. Welcome back to Longmont. Thank you. It's yeah. great being back. Yeah, when did you get back? Um, 24th. Oh, she's been back after, for a while. A couple days after the last board meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> I had a tan at that time. I don't have yeah, from Florida to the big snows. It uh, the night that we came back, there was five inches. Yeah, and then of course we've done better than that since then. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, real quick, um, uh, Nancy, as she gave her report earlier in this meeting, um, was kind of the featured program uh, last week at NGLA, and uh, you should know that. Um, uh, you'd be, you would have been real proud of Nancy if you always, were, if always. You were logged into that meeting and had a chance to hear her presentation and feel the, uh, the, the number and the nature of the questions that she got. 
<laughs> there's, I can guarantee you there's a lot of interest in getting a library, you know, having access to the library. And, um, and, and she handled uh, those questions well. She, I, I was proud of her and I know you would have been as well. Um, unrelated to this agenda, but, but related to Nancy's contributions, uh, she also last week participated in uh, a program, The Future We Deserve, which is aired on Longmont Public Media's website, YouTube, Channel 8. Uh, Nancy, along with um, a couple of others who are seriously involved in creating and uh, managing a public, common or public good, right, assets. She was part of that conversation because of her role um, as the director of the library and the library being one of the great public goods in this and in every community. <clears throat> so if you haven't watched it, you ought, to, you ought to go to the Longmont Public Media, go to YouTube, the Longmont Public Media channel and do a search for The Future We Deserve, episode number five. And uh, it was a fun conversation. Nancy was a serious contributor. Um, I, I have, um, beyond that, in terms of things the council is, uh, uh, topics or issues the council is working on, I have a list of seven that I can rattle off that may be interesting to you. Probably the one on the list that would be of most interest is the fact that on April 6th, we have a study session. And in that study session, we're going to get a, a report on the uh, Performing Arts and Conference Center Feasibility Study. And uh, I know you have an interest in it for a, a whole bunch of reasons, but it might be good just uh, to, to listen in to see how that one goes, uh, how it gets teed up, the kinds of uh, what gets highlighted, kind of questions that get asked in anticipation of what we know will be coming in the relatively near future. I'm not certain when, uh, but, but there'll be obviously a presentation um, to, the, to the council when you get the library feasibility study and probably a, a good way to you know, make some notes and decide what worked and what didn't and you know, how would you improve on what we'll hear on April 6th. So great, great. beyond that, I can, if, you're, if you care about you know, uh, auxiliary dwelling units or electric vehicle charging stations or the equitable carbon-free roadmap or the Urban Land Institute and what they're doing with their planning efforts in Southeast Longmont um, or the annexation of McIntosh Lake, all topics that you know are kind of coming up um, that you know are more than just kind of perfunctory um, and I'm happy to you know spend as much time as you want on any of those but I'm guessing you don't you don't want me to spend time on any of them and well I think there everybody has a voice here Nancy oh I just Tim did I hear that there was going to be some kind of charge in the future for the electric charging station some kind of fee yeah, the item on uh, April 13th. Because we have one in our library garage, so. Yes, I know. Uh, on April 13th, this, this item is on the April 13th agenda. Okay. And it's basically an update. Uh, number one, it's an update on, on increased use. So what's been the, mm -hmm. the trend in terms of use of the five charging stations that the city uh, provides. Mm -hmm. and, and the follow-on to that is given the increased level of use, um, uh, other municipalities do charge to use the charging stations. We haven't, as we've tried to make it easy for people and obviously at no cost, no charge for people to use. But the level of use is now such that um, at least what's going to be presented is a question about whether or not it's time to start charging for use of the, of the EV charging stations. So we'll see where it ends up. But that is, that's the question. And, and I'm certain we'll get data on um, uh, you know the benefits, the costs and benefits of of switching from a free uh, resource to one for which people are charged. Anybody else for uh, our councilman liaison? I'd love to hear about Macintosh Lake, but it's not a library issue, so I'll <laughs> no, it's not. I'll I'll push on. But I did have. Uh, a question that, that came to mind from um, rereading January's notes, and it's more like planting a seed kind of thing for these economic development meetings that come about from time to time. But there was an, uh, 
an item that you had talked about last time, the private investment group is looking at in, in opportunity zones. Yeah. And one of the concepts that was kicked around either by the, um, the community group that was involved with the library or, or with the board through Nancy, because I think this was a, a strategy that they used in, in Finland with their library, but they had a retail floor underneath the library and then they had the library on top of it. And then they, I think they had a maker space in there as well. And if, um, if we get into this uh, wrestling match on uh, financial support for the library and how we can best um, see that it does well in the future, maybe that's something that an investment group might be interested in trying to piggyback on to say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll put up whatever we're going to put up, but maybe we would, would benefit by having a, a library on site or something like that. And with the retail shops underneath, that helps pay for the uh, upkeep of the library and takes some of the burden off the city. So it's just, you know, I'm just trying to plant a seed for sure. something that, that might make sense down the road. Well, Mark, I, I'll, I'll say um, again, uh, I, think, I think there needs, to, we need to be very thoughtful and strategic about bringing together uh, the Friends of the Library, the Library Advisory Board, Friends of the Library, uh, those those in town who care about the library and and it, it's um, our investment in the library. So it it becomes not it doesn't only meet standards, right? But we would be best in class or we would exceed average, right? Um, I, I just think there is a potential to bring together what comes out of this feasibility study and what's what's coming with the Performing Arts Conference Center feasibility study. Um, especially as you think about the opportunity zone and, and where people might be interested in making investments. I just think there's a, it, it may not, it may not be, it may be too complicated or complex to put together what, what I think at least ought to be a consideration. And what you're talking about right now ought to be in that conversation. I, I just think there's a, some pretty exciting possibilities for a pretty grand proposal to the community and whether or not anybody will be interested in what I think about it is, you know, irrelevant to what what you would think about it or what what others might think about it. But uh, but but this opportunity will only come along in our lifetimes once, I think, where you have this feasibility study, the Performing Arts Conference feasibility study, Conference Center feasibility study, the the the, the work that was done on the STEAM initiative, an opportunity zone, and and an aspiration to do something bold, big and bold coming out of a pandemic that kind of sets the mark for the recovery of this community um, that differentiates it from other communities. I, I just think um, it's going to be a, a pretty interesting, exciting opportunity for us. And we ought to be, we really ought to be up to it. With the so I, I, think, I think that perspective is right. And I don't, um, I don't want to get ahead of Nancy on this because she's going to talk about the feasibility studies, but you know, there's thoughts on a district and there's thoughts on some sort of hybrid model. And I don't know which one of those is going to carry the day or whether it's, you know, the library is going to stay as part of the city. But I mean, it, if you've got a third party that's also interested in seeing that happen, now you've got some additional yeah. you know, wind at your back to, to you know, create the momentum to make those sorts of things happen. So yep. yeah. And I'm, and I'm thinking about ways to put more wind at, at our back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I had. If, if uh, we're okay, we can move on and um, we'll look at the feasibility study update, Nancy. Okay. We've made some progress since last time. We did finalize an issue and RF a request for a quote. Um, it didn't have to be an RFP because it's under that $50,000 amount. We did receive three responses from, to our RFP. All look pretty good to me so far. 
Um, we have a committee of folks that will be interviewing. The hardest part has been, we have 12 people that I'm really interested in that, that they talk to these folks and trying to get 12 people's schedules together has, especially during spring break time has been fun. So it looks like we probably will be delaying that until the week of eight, until April 7th. I will be sending out another schedule to folks who are involved in the interviews. Um, we have three different proposals. One is from a local company, who, which is actually an owner's rep. Um, for those of you who don't know, the owner's reps are usually thought of as kind of the go-between an architect and a construction firm. But these folks are out of Fort Collins and they um, have done a lot of these projects, these similar projects with other libraries in the area. They've worked with Loveland, they work with municipalities, um, they're working currently with Fort Collins. So um, they have a little interest, they have interesting ideas about spaces. With, so that I would say that that may be one of their specialties is thinking outside the box about um, joint use spaces and, and different kinds of spaces that libraries can occupy in a community. Um, one is from a consulting firm that I have worked with before that's out of Washington. And I would say that their specialty is, is financial modeling. So, so looking at different ways, um, creative hybrids, like you were kind of talking about, Mark, of different ways to, from outside financing, from inside financing, different ways to um, establish level of service. They all want, all the respondents, you know, start with establishing level of service standards, which means, you know, where, what is the norm, which a lot of that was, was provided by our, our first consultant group, um, gathering that data and seeing what is the norm in funding for libraries across the state and across the country, and then comparing our inputs and outputs to those norms and seeing, you know, where are we at a low level, a median level, or an optimal level. So um, I would say the second consultant's um, field of expertise looks like, you know, what type of um, what type of programs and services that your community desires and then putting a cost to them and, and talking about different funding models and how those work to accomplish the funding that you need to make your goals possible. And I think Tim and I talked about this and you know, whoever wants, to, whoever, you know, wants to get up and say, you know, I really want to someday achieve a median level of funding. And you, know, you really want something that's more aspirational than that, I hope for your community. And the third proposal is by a a uh, library strategies company in, that's out of um, the Minneapolis area. And they um, have kind of a fascinating history, which I won't go into now. We'll go into that more um, when we interview them, but they are kind of an offshoot originally of their friends, the library organization, but now they employ consultants that have different fields of expertise from libraries across the country. And they seem to have a really um, unique approach to this kind of issue as well. So, um, I don't know if Mark Mark is going to be in on this. I don't know if he's had any chance to look at these proposals yet, but they're very, they're they all respond to all of our questions, but they're very different. So, um, I think it'll be an interesting opportunity. So, we're going to try and uh, spend some time getting our questions together um, on those and and choosing a consultant to move forward. So, um, we did ask in the RFQ, and I think they've all responded to it in different ways for people to look outside the box and look at some hybrid models or some unconventional models of how to achieve what we want to achieve. And, you know, it used to be that, you know, your two options were municipal library with the, with the funding that goes with that or library district. And there are lots of in-betweens now and, and outside of the box options for libraries. So um, it's pretty exciting. We have that giant stack of data from the first consultants. Um, Normally we'd have to update all of that since we took a break for COVID here, but the 2020 stats, even though I just did the state report, 2020 stats are not gonna be compared to anything ever. So we will be looking you know, at primarily at, at still comparing those 2019 um, data points because the 2020 ones, I mean, they don't resemble anything. So, um, and we're hoping that, that you know, we get out of this in enough time for 21, 2021 stats to not look like 2020 stats. So um, we, I really, I'm excited to move forward. And I think we have a good group that's gonna be looking at these applications. So, do you have questions for me on this process? Can I have my normal 
one or two questions. Sure. Uh, or w one's actually a comment, one's a question. I, I just thought it was really creative for the friends group to come up with a consulting organization. It's, it's a big system, but that's, it's really cool. I mean, that's, that's really yeah. thinking outside of the box and that's, yeah, it is. I mean, that supports their library and everything else. Yes. The, um, the, the outfit from uh, Washington, yes. how big is, are they? Is that a She's one a, that's just a, That's one person. So she was with someone that she was a member of a larger firm when I worked with her called Burke Consulting. It's a very large consulting firm in the Chicago area, but she's since then struck out on her own. So, but she's done a lot of work in Colorado recently, I think mostly with the, the healthcare industry. So, so I was very um, specific in asking her about her workload and whether she could take this on. So. Sure, sure. That's, that's all I got. Does anybody else have anything for Nancy? I'm sure there'll be a lot more discussed as we move down the road here. I Katie? see Katie's hand. Yeah, so I guess the goal is then to interview your hoping the week, uh, next week or the following week, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it looks like we'll be, um, Karen Roney is going to be part of the interviews and she is going to be out of town and returning on April 6th. So we should be interviewing pretty much as soon as she gets back. Okay, and then making a decision fairly quickly thereafter? Yes, yes. Okay. Have they, have the three candidates indicated how quickly they could start? Should um, they most be? of them could, yes, they could start, they could all start pretty much immediately and they all have a, a really detailed timeline uh, that's included in their proposals of what would happen when. That's it. Good. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, thank you. Nancy. Um, okay. Uh, the subcommittee report on guidelines for use of our two grant funds. I don't. I, I've had two months to work on this and I have not. I have not worked on it. Uh, I will do it before the end of the, I, yeah. I'll do it before the next meeting. <laughs> uh, I, have none ex no, I have no excuses other than I've just been very busy. It's tax season at work. And so well, I do taxes for, all the time. <laughs> so, so hopefully I will have something for the April meeting. Are you okay with um, what you're being asked, or do you want to talk about it some more? Or no, I mean I'm supposed uh, to. I had my notes somewhere amongst my five thousand pieces of paper. I'm just supposed to come up with like a general. I don't even know where that note went, but um, outline of kind of how we want to operate going forward right for everyone to review in my mind i had i had two issues one was how do we um redefine the uses of the funds to make them more flexible and more meaningful for the library going right. forward that was one and the other one was how do how do we as a board approach um, the recommending of this money in a physically responsible fashion. That, that, were, that was my takeaway. There, uh, others may have other takeaways that they want to pass on to you as well. Uh, yeah, I had, I, had, I had notes from our prior meeting I, they are somewhere. I am not currently locating them, but they are somewhere. And I, yeah, they were fairly extensive. So I think those made sense to me when I, when I had them. So I, I feel, I feel pretty good that I can do it. I just need to do it. Okay. Well, you, you've got a track record of doing it. So, you know, we're, we're not worried. <laughs> Sorry. It will get done for April. Okay. Uh, uh, with that, I'll, uh, I think we covered the, 
item C under the little library involvement by the friends. Uh, unless there's something else that needs to be said on that, I'm ready to move on to new business. And the first item, I believe this is yours, Nancy, electronic participation policy. I stuck it on there and because I remembered it from last month and then I promptly forgot to send it to you. But um, let me give you the gist of it and then we can approve it next month. But basically, it's to approve what we're already doing. So there have been, there's always been an electronic participation policy to my knowledge, but it's been expanded a bit to cover the current situation. So basically what we'll be putting on the agenda next month to approve is this policy. And for example, you know, meetings can be held electronically or by phone or by other means of communication only when certain conditions are met. And the first one is the city manager determines that meeting in person is not practical or prudent because of a health pandemic or declaration of emergency affecting the city. So obviously the number one item is the one that is the most applicable and is the one that's been added. Um, you know, it specifies that all members of the board or commission can hear one, hear one another or otherwise communicate and can hear and read or discuss all testimony in a manner designed to provide maximum notice and participation, that members of the public can hear and read all discussion, that at least one member of the board or commission is present at the, reg at the regular meeting location unless not feasible. You don't have to do that in case of a pandemic. If it wasn't a pandemic or emergency declaration, you would have to have at least one person at the library. So. Um, all votes would be conducted by roll call. Um, minutes of the meeting are taken and promptly recorded. Um, timely notice is given to the public. We have the same rules about that, except now we use a, a new system called PrimeGov through the city. Um, so once again, the parts that have been added are the pandemic parts. If meeting in person is not practical or prudent due to a health pandemic or emergency affecting the city, the city shall use best, best efforts to provide the public a reasonable opportunity to be heard electronically. And so that's why we do the, the work ahead of time and make sure that we set these meetings up um, with information on the agenda of who to contact so that people would be able to attend the meeting. So um, there is a signature spot arranging for electronic participation. So we'll have to, at some point, um, vote and sign on this. So I will remember to send it to you promptly before the next meeting, but it's basically to officially authorize what we're already doing and we and all the other the other organizations in the city. Does, does this affect how we communicate amongst ourselves between meetings? Um, no, it, it, it's that those rules are always are still the same. You know, you still can't reply all and have discussions outside of your meeting. It doesn't matter if they're electronic or in person. So those rules are still the same. Um, if you see something from me where I need a response from you, I will probably still be reminding you to not reply all so we don't violate any, any open meetings regulations. So uh, the rules on that don't change. This just allows us to hold a meeting electronically and, and has provisions for the public to participate as well. So we'll be voting on that at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, any other items under new business that uh, anybody else wants to bring up? I don't see any hands up. Uh, next meeting date would be April 26th. Mark that on your calendar. Uh, any comments from the board on any other items? I see none. Councilman, you have anything additionally? Nope, I see none. Okay, with that, I move to adjourn at uh, 749. All in favor, very good. Hey, I just want to mention casually, and this is not a part of the meeting, but if any of you as board members have a yen to stop by and see some of our, our um, construction project in progress, feel free to do so. I would be happy to give you a little tour. Well, that'd be great. Monty, have you been in the building at all? I have not. Okay. I have not. I'd, I'd love to go in. Uh, will they give us helmets and stuff to wear? <laughs> you don't need a helmet because the repairs are underneath your feet. So. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So All right. I got gotcha. you. Right. You'd be okay without a helmet. What All you, right. That sounds good. Need, what I can give need, you an extra mask. So you do need to have Nancy meet you at the door. You do. Okay. Because her right. staff, her staff will not let you 
pass the tables out there. They won't. Gotcha. Well, not. They follow orders pretty well. They're pretty. They're, they're pretty loyal. Pass, Good. Right? Good. They are. But. No, I, I may take you up on that. I wouldn't mind. Okay. That. I wouldn't if, mind yeah. Going if you want to go ahead and shoot me an email or call me, then I'd be happy to do that. Okay. That sounds good. I'll do so. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Don. You're welcome. I'll talk to you more about it later this week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.